there was a very thick theological lesson in that video that beginning with what you don't know, you can't love, and then moving on to a godless culture, and then talking about the political platform that's explicit in the Democratic Party. And then you had this great line that everybody loved. You said, um, you did all this research and counting up the numbers, how many Democrats voted, I mean, how many Catholics voted for Obama? Yeah. And the answer was? Zero. One day I just thought that, well, you know what? If you're truly Catholic, instead of a pretender or a masquerading as, as a Catholic, and we know we know who they are. They, they put on, they, I didn't tell them to, they did this. They put on Nancy Pelosi's picture. Listen, she's no more Catholic than the Dalai Lama. Yeah. That complaint. From, from Bishop was, well, he uses um, his manner and tone are offensive. Well, I, okay, I'll tell you what's offensive, that there isn't a manner and tone that's crying out for vengeance for 10,000 babies every single Saturday. Where's, where's the hue and cry about that? No. Shall we talk about manner and tone? Bring it on. I would be happy to talk about manner and tone. 10,000 babies. You know, the frustration, like the, the accusation about manner and tone. Um, okay, but I mean, Read the Bible. We Catholics need to read the Bible. Go listen to the manner and tone of Jeremiah. Listen to the manner and tone of Nahum, the minor prophet. Whoa, get ready for that. Go listen to the manner and tone of Elias the prophet against the prophets of Baal. I'm telling you, prophetic ministry is not the pleasantries of James Martin. I got to say, Father Alman, I'm a little concerned for you, I think, <laughs> because I know, I know you're not going to change to your message, and I know you're not going to change your message, your tone, and your manner. Uh, and I know that the bishops in the United States do not appreciate this, because there was a great clip from Bishop Strickland in 2018 when the McCarrick thing hit yeah. at the USCCB. Uh, there's a short clip of it on my highlights channel. Do we believe the doctrine of the church or not? I, I think that must be where I saw it. Yes. I, know what you're I think I know what you're going to be talking about. And yeah. he says there's a priest who goes around the country yeah. and he yeah. comes into many of your dioceses. And yes. he doesn't teach what the Catholic Church teaches as Bishop Strickland. Yeah. And he goes, you know, as brothers, brother bishops, you know, we have to be consistent and we have to defend the faith. We have to teach the one true faith. And he doesn't in the clip say James Martin, but it's manifestly right. obvious he is talking yeah. about James Martin. Right. But the problem is, is, you know, James Martin is in New York with public appearances with Cardinal Dolan. He's in D.C., public appearances with Archbishop uh, Gregory. And he's on the Dicastery of Communications, hand-picked and hand-appointed by Pope Francis. So yeah. the sad thing, is that we have been infiltrated and those messengers at the moment at the moment those messengers are the privileged ones and they can say and do whatever they want and not one canonical thing happens can james martin put out a video yes yes he can, can. james he martin does. tweet yes can james martin show up at Anywhere he wants, a mosque, a synagogue, a Catholic church, a Protestant church, and teach what he wants to teach, yes. Meanwhile, Father James Altman can't do a live stream. And this is the deep hypocrisy of the Catholic church, not just in America, globally. Globally, yeah. Yeah, you know, if you said, okay, take the, be a devil's advocate and defend against that, um, there's no words I could say because, yeah. you know, as a lawyer, you kind of try to look at both sides of the argument. There's zero, there's zero side to, to that other, other side of the argument that, that he's allowed to go and do what he does. Leading, talk about wound, leading souls down the broad road to perdition as the saying goes. That's right. It's, I just dumbfounded by the, and you know, so this, this video you're talking about with, with Bishop Strickland, it was like he was, uh, and he's about, he's about the bravest we got. Like he was walking on eggshells to make sure nobody got offended. Right. But when you have, for instance, the bishop who complained about Nick Sandman. When I saw that bishop put an open letter in, the, I think it was 
his local newspaper down there, ripping into Nick Sandman, calling him a racist. Now, now here's children, youth, that had just gotten back from a march for life to save black babies. He rips into those kids, right? So I, so I decided, okay, all right, I got financial backing to publish, take a full page ad out in that same newspaper saying, okay, drop the gloves now, buddy. So my spiritual director said, well, okay, you can do that. But before you do, you should just go talk to your bishop because he's going to find out. So you should, you should let him know what you're up to. I said, well, okay, that makes sense. So, so I did. And I had a, a wonderful meeting with Bishop Callahan. I'm telling you, I have such great respect for him uh, and why it hurt so much when what happened two days right. ago happened. Well, in this meeting, I explained to Bishop what I wanted to do. And he said, I think yeah, I got to give him credit for this, but he said, well, okay, you can do that. But here was his question, but to what end? Because you're not going to change that guy's mind down there. And what's going to do is going to detract from your uh, serving the people here if all of a sudden it attracts attention. So maybe that's kind of prophetic because that seems to be what's happened now. But uh, so I said, okay, well, all right, I won't. It makes sense to what end. And so I didn't. Right. So last summer, I, I mean, I had the privilege of going out to uh, the Knapp Institute and and I went to one of the breakout sessions because Nick Sandman's parents were there. So they had a little Q&A. And then afterward, I went up, I went up and talked to him personally and I apologized to them. I said, I feel like I was a coward that I did not speak up on your behalf and I did not do what I was going to do. Uh, and they were they I mean, they were just wonderful. to me. I, I couldn't be prouder of. Them, them staying the course of them, you know, going through the appellate process of them finally achieving the writing of wrong. 